IDW Sonic Bad Guys comic issue 4. So because the bad guys kept talking instead of instantly killing Starline after they got what they wanted, like they would with their experience in evilness, Starline somehow had time to press a button on his tricord to do a jump flip and punch Tumble's fist, which realistically hurts Tumble. If Mimic read Starline's diary, you'd think that he'd have known about the tricord and known to kill him fast enough, but instead he and Zavik both thought they had the upper hand. I mean, he was told about the tricor in the diary he saw. Starline should have made himself speedy as soon as Tumble got his fist hurt, logically. But instead he waited until after they talked a bunch first. Zavik tells Mimic to stay here in case he doubles back. Why would he expect Mimic to follow his order anyways? Mimic plans on hiding and ambushing Starline from above. Then he realizes that Starline was right that these bad guys are dangerous and deleting Mimic from Eggman's files won't matter if one of them tells Eggman everything. So predictable. He plans against the others to try to wipe out all four of them, wanting to make sure Eggman gets in here. Why did he assume they would ever tattle on him anyways? They'd have nothing to gain from it. I think he's crazy paranoid. But it makes sense that he would want to make sure. I guess his paranoia would explain why he betrayed Whisper because he just assumed that his team couldn't win and the shape shifting to kill Eggman in ambush somehow wouldn't work. He doesn't upload and plans on pointlessly visiting Whisper. Gee, I wonder if she'll defeat him. What a moron. Yeah, just get yourself thrown in jail again right away. But I can't blame him for wanting to plan against those monsters. I like that Eggman's wearing a scarf for once, even if it's purple. And it makes sense that he'd wear his goggles when flying in case anything would try to get in his eyes. And again, it's just all the more proof that there is no real mandate against him changing his design. Because look, different design. Orbot tells him that that alert was cleared as false, and Zavik is running loose in an Eggnet hub. Starline smartly holds his fists out, so that Ruff runs into it. You'd think that would kill Ruff. I guess Ruff had rings, and Starline's blue aura makes his fists invincible too naturally in order to handle the effects of speed on his entire body. Or he had rings too. Starlight says that one dose of his toxin will conveniently immobilize him, not just poison him. So that's not just mean, it's pragmatic. He asks what two will do, and Ruff calls out the Starlight's here. Really, there's no reason he shouldn't have just given him two doses. He wanted to eliminate him in the first place. Savik tries to insult Starline as he's hiding in the wires above him, and he calls Starline just like Eggman for his arrogance. Won't he hear him land on the floor after walking away? I guess he waited long enough. Starline smartly agrees with Zavik. He realizes that he let his vendetta against Zavik blind him like Eggman is by Sonic, and was too quick to discard his assets just like how Eggman cast him aside. Logically, he'd actually learn from this if he's supposed to be so smart. But it does make sense that he'd want to get rid of those monsters, because why wouldn't he hate them? He wants to cut his losses. Tumble wants revenge on Starline for hurting his bro. Why isn't it explained yet that they're from parents of different Mobian species? Because he's clearly not a skunk. I don't know what the hell he's supposed to look like, but it's not a skunk. I don't think I had a big problem with the way most of the civilians from the Looney Tunes show looked. It's best when it's very clear what type of animal it's supposed to be. Starline bests him with his speed. If Starline was really a competent villain, Ruff and Tumble wouldn't survive this, and I honestly don't know why he makes sure they do. He wrote a zombie apocalypse. What's darker than that? Also, why didn't he poison Zavik too? Why didn't he poison all of them? I guess he barely has any toxin and just uses it sparingly. That should be explained as well. It's probably the case. But I don't have room to assume that the comic does go with the logical explanations without being told when it's a comic that's full of plot holes. So it does need to assume that we need things explained to us. It hasn't earned that benefit of the doubt. That's what the Metal Virus arc taught me. Oh, and it turns out Tumble fell on Ruff, who nicely says that he at least tried. Solon goes into the room Mimic was once in, relatably scared, and apparently he hadn't deleted Egg Bay Sigma from the registry yet. So he said finally before deleting it. He tries to do so and converts the fences to serve him and erase all the change logs. He runs off and of course Ruff and Tumble are out of core gear energy. 
They get mad at Zavik for its lack of respect, and are nice to each other at least. It just doesn't count for much when they're mean to everyone else. If Zavik was so smart, he would have expected that Mimic wouldn't follow his orders because he had no reason to. Oh good, he at least says he's not surprised, but then why did he immediately call out for Mimic? Of course, he's used to the Deadly Six obeying all his orders. But Mimic is a known traitor. He wants to use the machine to find leads on this Deadly Six. Of course, Eggman shows up to talk to him, and says that he's fine with vaporizing this place to kill him because he can always rebuild. That's surprisingly smart of him. And really undermines the whole accomplishments of any time the heroes destroy a building of his. Zavik types on the keyboard and takes control of the robots in the base to get them to shoot at Eggman. He was satisfyingly upset as we see Mimic in the truck. Starline looks down at the base sadly, and predictably, Zavik survives the base's destruction for some reason. Something about a red thing on his chest. Maybe by red, it means he used the red core gear power to save himself with a super strength. Oh, suddenly it turns out Zavik's injured and has to force himself to move and get a robot to help him walk. So he survived, but he's somehow injured? He only looks bruised. You'd think a guy who's about controlling robots wouldn't have needed to type on a keyboard to take control of all the robots in the base. First, Shadow's underpowered, and now he underpowers the Deadly Six. I mean, they're already magical. What's with the limit? Eggman says that there's no way Zavik was the only one responsible for all those raids, because he's not smart enough. And yet somehow he never figures out that it has to be Starline. The only smart enemy he has that's not Tails, maybe. Starline thinks that while the execution wasn't optimal, the end results were achieved because he now has a facility that can meet the demands of his later plan. So what were his parents like to make him like this? Oh, that's not important! Why bother having good writing to make a character make sense? He said we're just gonna get annoyed constantly by his smug face. He thinks that before, he wanted to prove he was worthy to Eggman, but realizes that he's just as competent as Eggman, and he's self-aware and willing to improve, so why bolster a man just as guilty of maintaining the status quo as Sonic? Well, if he ever makes nukes or missiles of any kind and doesn't try to blow up Sonic or Tails' house, then he's gonna be just as guilty as Eggman is. He wants to conquer the world to prove it to himself. Lame, boring, cliche, and typical. Why remove the only thing that makes him unique to be just another Eggman clone? Who isn't like this as a world conqueror? He's supposed to be smarter, but he can't be too smart. And he'll always fail anyways. If he was really smart, like he would have killed all the heroes in their sleep. It's common sense to keep him the Eggman fanboy because that was literally his only identity. That's like practically the only thing I liked about him. This issue by Ian Flynn was about Starlight getting control of Egg Base Sigma after the Eggnet hub was destroyed by Eggman in an attempt to destroy Zavik after Mimic betrayed him. It's kind of confusing on the first read having two different buildings, Egg Base Sigma and that place, one of which you want to control over. Because in both of the stories that involved the two places the villains were doing the exact same thing. Both of those were places where the villains were fighting robots. Egg pawns, even. Of course, Starline saved himself with his new powers, which was impressive to see. So how are Rough and Tumble able to casually walk around after being poisoned? They somehow managed to escape. You'd think they'd need to go to a hospital afterwards or they'd be doomed. You'd think they wouldn't have survived this arc. 